glad that you're here. I know you might not have known this, but this is the cool service. So you're here. You made it. Um, we're so excited that you're here. My name's Will Bray, and I'm the student coordinator, praise God, uh, here at Upstate Church Harrison Bridge. And we just want you to know that we are so excited that you're here, and we're so glad uh, that you're here. And God's really been doing an amazing thing in the life of our church. And so on the screen here in just a second, you're going to see um, all the people who have become a part of our fellowship, either at our downtown campus, here at Upstate Church Harrison Bridge, or even at our Five Forks campus uh, that has already begun. And God is really doing a new thing, doing a great work, bringing families into our family. And so we're excited about that. Uh, and so if you, maybe this is your first time here, uh, maybe you're a guest, uh, we just want you to know more than anything that we love you uh, and that we're glad you're here. But if you would just do us a favor and uh, fill out that connect card that's in the seat back in front of you, if you can write really fast, you can drop it in the offering plate if it comes by. Uh, but if not, uh, you can just uh, fill that out and give that to somebody with one of these out in the lobby after our service. Uh, we just want to mainly uh, just know how we can serve you better, how we can minister to you uh, in, in a better way. And so however we could do that, we'd love uh, to have that information from you uh, and just know how we can uh, help you uh, in your journey with Jesus. And uh, the last thing is if uh, you're a member here or you're a part of our uh, family here at Upstate Church here in Bridge, then you probably already know about Rock the Block that's coming up in a couple weeks. Um, if not, this is an, an event that we do uh, that we put on for the community that we really just try to bring the community on campus and we try to show them how much we love them. We try to um, serve them and, and uh, love on uh, their families uh, as the community comes here uh, to our campus uh, in a couple, just three, two Saturdays from now. So um, if you are at all interested in serving in uh, uh, rock the block if you say yeah that's something that I want to be a part of would you also uh, take the connect card out fill that out and just put rock the block uh, in the in the blank part at the bottom uh, we would love to know that uh, you're willing to serve and uh, we'll be contacting you sometime this week uh, to let you know how you can do that uh, so just want to say uh, thank you for being here this morning we are so glad that you're here uh, I'm going to pray for us real quick and uh, then we'll take up the offering as we watch a, a quick a video Lord we just thank you so much for uh, the great work that you're doing in this place Lord uh, the uh, people that we're getting to see move from death to life. Um, God, the lives that are being changed um, and the family that is being created and fostered here, uh, even at this campus, Lord. We are just expectant for you to move. Uh, and we, just, we are just desperate for a touch of heaven, Lord. And so I just pray that you would just move in this place uh, and that you would change lives, Lord. Uh, we love you and we just give this time to you. In your name I pray, amen. church so welcome to the first ever repetitive 1115 service right <laughs> yeah okay I'm excited about it listen I told him I told the first service like when I woke up this morning it was like a, a kid on Christmas I was just like yes we get to do this twice today right I'm I'm excited uh, that God's doing what he's doing at upstate church Harrison Bridge man and so good news you chose the second service so you are theoretically should get the better sermon because I got to practice this once already right uh, but for those of you who like you have to do this twice like let me just say that I am immensely sorry like you shouldn't have to be subjected uh, to cruel and unusual punishment like listening to me twice but here you are all right, so, but if you got your Bible, go ahead and open to Psalm 148. While you're doing that, let me, uh, let me go ahead and give you a little bit of information. Last week, uh, a lot of you filled out uh, information cards indicating that you would either, one, like to be in a connect group, or two, 
you would, uh, you would like to start the process of being discipled. And the way we want to start that process for you is by putting you in a connect group. So I want to give you four quick options uh, as to what some connect groups that are happening right here at Harrison Bridge, okay? Or, or, or with primarily Harrison Bridge leaders. Number one is that Monday nights, uh, uh, Miss Tracy Weldy, will you raise your hand, Miss Tracy, leads a connect group for women on Monday nights, every Monday nights. If you want more information about that, see her, okay? Also, there are, we have two uh, connect groups that are meeting throughout the week. One is led by the Hileys. Miss Hiley, will you raise your hand? All right, she's missing her uh, worst half. We'll call him that one since he's not here. Uh, but if you want some information about that group, there she is. And there's another group that meets tonight uh, that is led by the Mitchells. The Mitchells, will you please raise your hand? All right, and, okay, so they're here. Uh, if you would like to go to their group, uh, you can see them for information about it afterward. And there's one connect group right now that's meeting on Sunday morning that is led by the Stevenses. Stevenses, would you take your moment in the sun? All right, there they are there. Well, she's going to stand up, man. He's not. Okay, we're here. So uh, they, they also have a connect group that meets on Sunday mornings at 10 o'clock during the first hour uh, that you can be a part of. And the reason, I, the reason I'm taking time to tell you about that right now is because we legitimately believe it's important, okay? So if you want to go closer in your walk with Christ, this is the place to start, and I've just given you uh, some ways to do that, okay? So there you go. Uh, if you got your Bible open to Psalm 48, 148, that's where we're going to be. Before we go into it, let me pray for us real quick, okay? Dear God, I thank you so much uh, for the opportunity, dear God, to do this a second time, God. Truly, God, this, it blows me away that what you're doing at Harrison Bridge, God. And I just pray, Father, would you please uh, do a work that we cannot explain, God. Uh, Lord, as I preach, God, Holy Spirit, you alone deserve glory. Take me out of it. And uh, dear God, I just pray that you would work among us now. In Christ's name I pray, amen. All right, so today we are, as you can see, continuing on in our series of core values. And I've told you these are important because they are expression of who we are and who we want to be as a church, okay? So these are important because these, uh, these tell us the way we should be behaving, okay? These tell us the goals and the places we should be going. And today we've come to the core value of multi-generational. So we want to be a multi-generational church. And basically this just means that this, we are a church that values every person at every life stage and circumstance. Okay? That is who we are as a church. And now if you've been coming to this church for any amount of time past two or three weeks, I hope that it's obvious that you can see that. Okay? We, we value every person at every life stage and every age. Right? You, you guys have a 24-year-old pastor. I'm so Sorry, right? So you got me up here on stage who's 24, and then you got Mr. Stewart in the back here who's at the door every Sunday morning passing out, out uh, bulletins who's uh, 80, right? And I'm not calling Stewart old. If you're thinking that, that's you, right? But that, that Stewart's back there every Sunday, okay? So we value every age, every life uh, stage. But if we can just be honest, multi generational anything is not very common in our world anymore, right? Have you ever really stopped to think about the stereotypes that, uh, that, that the world around us views, that, views the age groups, right? Have you ever stopped to think about how the stereotypes pit us against, us against each other as age groups and tend to divide us? It, it pits old versus young. Think about it this way. Stereotypes that live around us, we know what they say. What do they say? That old people are out of touch, behind the times, and too over, over the hill to be valued or to contribute, right? That, if we're honest, that's how we kind of think sometimes. It's all right. The, the, I'll tell you what, 10 o'clock was way more loose. Y'all got to loosen up a little bit. It's okay. And it, what does it say about young people? Young people are too distracted. You know, millennials, always on their phone, right? Always Facebooking. They're disrespectful, and they have, no, they have no respect for authority, and they're too rebellious to make a difference right now, right? Young people drive too fast. Old people think the music is too loud, Right? But what both groups fail to realize is that old people used to drive that fast. They just slowed down, right? Now they're that person in the left lane who we're behind. We're like, get over, right? Seriously, if that's you, get over, okay? <laughs> and young people, let me just assure you, as you get older, you will think the music is too loud, right? You're like, not me, right? There, there, there are people who break the mold. We've got a, one couple that comes here, and every, they're, they're late 80s, and every Sunday when he walks out, he's like, man, could you just crank it up a little bit more? I'm just like, amen, brother, right? That, that's what I want. 
But what I want you to see is that these stereotypes put us against one another, but this is the way it's always been, right? And if you're here this morning and you grew up uh, 60s, 70s, 80s, right? I mean, what's the world, what, what is the older generation always said? Man, the world's going to hell in a handbasket with these youth, right? So ever since Elvis started shaking the hips and rock and roll became a thing, right? It's just been, it's been old against young. That's the way it's always been. But here we're going to fight, we're going to fight against that tendency. We're not going to let the world drive old and young and diversity apart. We want to be a true example of old and young together. That's why as we come to Psalm 148, let me give you just a little background to the psalm. I typically don't like to take just a section out of a, something like a psalm, right? But, so this morning, this whole psalm is a call to worship. And we're going to read verses 11 through 13 because the, uh, verses 11 13 through 13 just kind of summarize the whole thing anyway. So we don't need to read the whole thing. But I want you to see... This is a call for people to worship God, but more than that, it is a call to multi-generational and diverse worship. So read it with me. Psalm 148, verses 11 through 13. This is what the Bible says. Kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth. Just a quick side note right there. Where the Bible says all rulers of the earth right there, that's not necessarily talking about people in authority. If you go back, he's already called princes, right? He doesn't need to be redundant and say princes and princes, okay? Right there when he's talking about all rulers of the world, if you go back to Genesis 1, when God created man, what did God call men and women? He said they were to be rulers of the world. They were to have domain over everything. So where he says here, kings of the earth and all nations, you princes and all rulers, what he's actually saying is you, all you people, whether rich or poor, whether of high status or whether of low status, all right? So kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and maidens together, old men and children. Verse 13, let them praise the name of the Lord for his name alone is exalted. His majesty is above earth and heaven. Here's what I want you to see before we even go into this. God is serious about young and old worshiping together and diversity worshiping together and we are going to be serious about it too. So if you got your note taken, guide, the first thing to notice in this text, point number one, is that we are created intentionally diverse. Look at verses 11 through and 12 again with me. It says, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and maidens together, old men and children. Notice here that we're talking about all different kinds of people at all different stages and places in life. We're talking about young people and old people, okay? We're talking about rich people and praise God I can be included. We're talking about poor people, okay? We're talking about all kinds of people. And because, because it says all peoples and all rulers there, and I clarified that meant all people again, you can include in this variety all people, white people, black people, handicapped people, big people, and small people, right? When God calls people to worship Him, He is not calling one specific type of person as if there was one type of person's worship who is better than another kind of person's worship. God is an equal opportunity person, right? All worship matters. And hey, see, here's the most important thing that we need to notice out of this text, and I want you to write this down if you're taking notes. Diversity matters to God. Diversity matters to God. And because of that, diversity is going to matter to us. Now, I want you to hear my heart on this. We don't want to be a multi-generational or diverse church because we are a PC church. Okay? There's a lot. Everything in life now is PC, right? And whether you think that's good or bad, I just want you to know that's not our motivation for trying to be diverse. Okay? We don't want to be a church that honors old and young alike because the outside world is pressuring us to do that. We don't want to be pe uh, people who honors all different races and so socioeconomic statuses because the, it's the woke thing to do, right? We want to be a church that values diversity because God values diversity. 
That's our motivation for this. We want to love young and old, white and black, infants and middle-aged persons, middle-aged parents, because diversity truly matters to God. And now here's where it comes down to. If, if this is true of us and we are really going to value diversity, we have to start being willing to embrace a little discomfort here. Because if we genuinely value diversity, guys, I just want to let you know, as a church, this is not something that's going to be very easy. Why? Because the natural tendency of every human being is to drift toward people with whom you look most like and in whom you have the most in common with. Now, i got to be honest. I was, I was hesitant at how far this morning I should go with this point, right? But the more I thought about it, the more I felt the Holy Spirit kind of leading me in a direction. And I just want you to understand something. The truth is, as we reach into the upstate, the norm of the people we are going to reach are not going to look like me. Okay? And here's what I want you to understand. If you don't look like me, the norm of the people we're going to reach is not going to look like you. Because we are not going after a specific type of person. But I, I, I gotta, I, I, I've got to speak to this for just a minute, just a minute and, and let you know from leadership where my heart is on this. Listen, I come from South Georgia, baby. All right? I know racism, right? I, racism runs deep even in my family, right? Me and Jenna always joked that we wanted to adopt a child from another country and then name it after our most racist family member, right? We haven't done that yet, but it's still a great possibility, right? So if we adopt a child, but then I'm kind of outing the guy because I told you that. So but we'll cross that bridge when we, got, when we get to it. But here's what I want you to understand. If in your heart you are the type of person who values one type of person, one socioeconomic status, one race over another race, and you are not willing to repent of that, I want you to understand that there are many churches in the upstate which would probably value your contribution. But Upstate Church Harrison Bridge is not one of them. Because as a church, we are committed to reaching anyone and everyone who needs Christ, not just those who look like us. Amen. And listen, putting this on, and this is going to require love and patience. You know, the Bible calls for those two things a lot. When we're reaching people who are not like us, it calls for us to be patient with other people because we just truly don't understand where other people come from. And it's going to call for us to be patient. And turning this back to the multi-generational aspect, listen, I understand that it takes many of you love and patience to have a 24-year-old pastor, okay? When most of y'all probably heard that I was 24, y'all got together in a room and was like, what are Brian and Wes and Wayne thinking, right? I know y'all thought that because I thought that, right? And then I got here and I'm like, man, they really are crazy. They're actually giving me this job, right? Never, that's another story. But I know it takes y'all patience, and the truth, the reality is, if we're going to reach the people that we say we're going to reach, it's going to take love and patience. And then this is where I want you to notice this. Diversity not only matters to God, diversity makes sense for the mission of God. Okay, listen to this. Diversity makes sense to the mission of God. If we are going to reach every age and every race, we have, it's going it's to take all ages and all races. Can you imagine just how few people we would reach if all we had at Upstate Church Harrison Bridge were white, middle-aged, democratic Clemson fans? Right? I'm just going to tell you, that's leaving a lot of people out there we got no influence with, right? And like, like I said, listen, uh, listen, there are a lot of young people who need Jesus. And I'm from South Georgia. Everybody was a Republican. Listen, there are a lot of Republicans who need Jesus. And I was at the UGA-USC game yesterday, and I promise you, all you Clemson fans can testify, there are a lot of USC fans who need Jesus, okay? But if, we, if we're going to reach a diverse group of people, it's going to take us embracing that diversity and being willing to become that diversity. Diversity makes sense to the mission of God. If we really want to reach the upstate, guys, if we really want to reach old and young, black and white, if we want to reach anybody and everybody, we have to be willing to be anybody and everybody. And this matters to God. And it's going to matter to us.
That's the first thing I want you to see. Second thing I want you to see is this. We are created to exalt God together. We are created to exalt God together. So there's two, kind of two points to this statement. I want to prove it to you in two different ways. First part is we are created to exalt God. I want to prove that to you. I want to argue that on the individual level. I want to prove that to you first. And then, afterward, I want to prove to you that we're created to, to exalt God, not only alone and individually, but together. Look at, look at verse 12 and 13 with me. Young men and maidens together, old men and children. And if we're being honest, the whole psalm right here can be summed up in verse 13. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for His name alone is exalted, and His majesty above heaven and earth. Above earth and heaven. The whole point of this psalm is that God is worthy of the praise of everything in the whole earth. Now, if you go back and read this whole psalm, you'll see that God not only calls for the praise of humans, He calls for the praise of the sea creatures and the animals. So what, what the psalm is getting at here is that from dog to human, God deserves worship. And so what, the thing for us to understand from this psalm, I, I, I want to argue to it on the, uh, in the individual level first, is that you and I were created for the glory of God. That is our purpose. I, I want to show you another text in the Bible that proves this a little bit better. Isaiah 43, verse 6 and 7. It's going to be on the screen. Let's read it right here. Isaiah 43, verses 6 and 7 says, I will say to the earth... There we go. All right. <laughs> I told you it was coming. Isaiah 43, 6 and 7. I will say to the north, give up. And to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the end of the earth. Verse 7. Everyone who is called by my name. This is God talking. Why does he want them to come to him? Verse 7. Whom I created for my glory. That is the clearest statement in Scripture as to why God put breath in your lungs. You were created. You have oxygen in your body today to go about the business of glorifying God. And listen, I don't care what's on your schedule the rest of the day. When you woke up this morning, your purpose was to glorify God. So if you're going to leave here and you're going to go canvas the community for right the block for us, your purpose is to glorify God. Or if you're leaving here and you're going home and putting your kids down to take a nap, your purpose there is to glorify God. If you get up and you go and cook dinner tonight, your purpose is to glorify God. If you get up and you go to Five Force tonight, your purpose is to glorify God. That is why you have oxygen in your lungs and it will be the same reason why why tomorrow when you wake up to go to work? Yet, I, th I want us to understand this is serious business. It is very important that we understand this because in large part, one of the biggest reasons that so many of us go through life always searching for the next thing, always hungry, always unfulfilled is because we do not understand why we were created and we go through life looking in the mirror instead of looking to God. And I just got to be honest with you. I know for a fact we don't get this. I know for a fact most of the time I don't get this. Let me, let me just give you one example of it. If we were to understand our, our purpose, we would live life with passion. I want you to know that. But yesterday, and I can't help but always think this when I go to a public event, concert, sporting event, doesn't matter what it is. I went to the UGA USC game, and man, I, it, I had a great time, um, primarily because we beat the tar out of USC, but don't leave here mad at me if you're a USC fan, it's okay. Um, but I had a great time, but I just can't always, I can always notice when people come into these events, there were 90,000 people in the stadium. And man, they were acting like complete idiots. About 22 men on a football field doing something with a ball back and forth, right? I mean, passion galore. There was so much passion in my section that two South Carolina fans were getting in a fight with each other, okay? I mean, these people were just jacked up passionate about something. And I couldn't help but sit there and think how badly we missed the point when in our lives we are passionate about something that has no purpose and adds no value to our life and we're not passionate about living for God. You want to know why that is? It's because we don't understand our purpose like we say we do. God help us realize that we were created for His glory. Now, 
I said I wanted to, I hope I've proved to you that we're created for his glory. I said I wanted to prove that not only we were created to exalt God with our personal lives, we're created to exalt God together. Look back with me at verse 12. Turn back to the psalm. God says old and young together. Verse 12 right here is missing the word together, but it says young men and women, old men and children together. Now, I want you to understand something. This kills the old idea of your relationship with God just being something you can do on the individual level. When I see you in the street and I say, hey, brother or sister, I hadn't seen you at church in six weeks, you say, no, brother, I love coming to church, but you know, my relationship with God is just something that's between me and God. That's dumb. Okay? The Bible doesn't let us off the hook that way. The Bible says that we were created to do this together. And now here's what that means for us in this room. We must be willing to lay down preference for purpose. If we are to accomplish our purpose as a church of exalting God together, preference must be laid down for purpose. You see, we, we all have preferences. Some of us probably prefer a different kind of music. Some of us probably prefer a different service time. Some of us probably prefer that we not go to two services. Some of us probably prefer for the preaching to be a little bit better. Amen, okay? But here's what I want you to understand. We all have preferences, but the real question is not are all of our preferences being met, but is our purpose being accomplished? And now, here's what this means. We've got to be willing to kill this church shopping mentality about Harrison Bridge that lives inside of us and realize that we are not coming to church to be consumers. We are coming to church to be investors. And now I just primarily want to speak to you if you've been coming here for a few weeks, but you have yet to, get, to really get involved. Maybe you've been coming here five weeks, six weeks, a few months, a few years, right? You've been here since the relaunch. I don't know. But here's what I want you to understand. If you have come to the point where you have decided, I like this church more than I like the church down the road, and I like this guy, he preaches average, and the worship is great, so I'm going to keep coming back here. If that's you and you've decided that this is your church, here's what I want you to understand. It's time to stop being a consumer of what's going on at Harrison Bridge and to start being an investor. And if you come and you're saying to yourself, this church, has, I have a need that this church is not meeting, the question you need to be asking is, how can I invest in this church in order to change it for the better? We need more people putting into the bank account that is Harrison Bridge than they are taking out of the Harrison Bridge bank account. Because here's what I want you to realize. There are plenty of lost people in the world who we've got money to spend on. Okay? We need people pouring in, not just taking out. This is the ultimate reason, guys, we're even going to two services. I want you to understand that. The reason we're here at 1115 today is because that we have a purpose to glorify God. It's, we want to reach more people for Jesus Christ. We want to glorify God. And to do that, it takes going forward. It takes stretching. It takes change. That's the reason we're doing this. So the question is, is are we laying down our preferences to accomplish our purpose? Last thing. I want you to see that we are created to pass it on. And now, if you got your Bible, we're going we're gonna to leave this Psalm, Psalm 148, and we're going to turn to Psalm 71, verse 8. Hey, uh, that's not the right verse. Psalm 71, 18. Maybe that is the right verse. I'm sorry. Psalm 71, 18. This is what the Bible says. So even to old age, this is a, this is a saint talking. Picture, the, picture these words as your own. Even to old age and gray hairs, O oh God, do not forsake me until I proclaim your might to another generation, your power to all those to come. I want you to see here that the psalmist is revealing the heart behind multi-generational worship. So I t I'm telling you that as a church, we value young and old and subsequently all different people at all different stages of life. I'm telling you we value that and this is the verse that reveals the reason why we value that. The reason why is the heart of this ministry is discipleship. One of the biggest reasons we need all different kind of ages and all different kind of people is because we need the wisdom of people who have gone before us to show us the way in the days to come. I, I, I just used the example earlier in the first service about, about me personally, okay? I just, I'm, I'm just being real honest and transparent here with you. 
me and my wife have no idea what we're doing in this parenting thing. So if you come up to us and, and you've done this thing before and you're like, bro, I see what you're doing and that's dumb, right? I welcome that, okay? You're not going to hurt my feelings. Because listen, most days I'm just trying to keep my child alive. That's not an exaggeration. That wasn't a joke. Y'all laugh at that part as if it was a joke. That is the serious part, okay? She tries to kill herself at two years old on a regular basis, right? I need help. I need people who have gone before me to tell me this is how you parent in a godly way. This is how your marriage lasts in a godly way. We need that desperately. And listen, it's not just for old to young. It's, it's a mutual thing. If you've been somewhere before that you see somewhere else in, if you care about them at all, man, disciple them. Push them through. We need that. Not only do we need that in church, but I want you to notice how the band talks here. This should be the desires of our heart. We should be desperate to tell other people about the glory and goodness of God that we've seen in our lives. Look at what he says. God, even to old age and gray hairs, do not forsake me until I proclaim your might to another generation. What is he saying? God, don't let me die in my sleep tonight because I'm this hungry to tell somebody else. Guys, I've got to be real honest with you. This is something that convicted me. Because the heart that is in this man this saint, this woman, whoever it might be, the heart that is in you to proclaim the goodness of God convicts me. Because so many times I go through life so preoccupied with myself that I am not even concerned with proclaiming the goodness of God. And that begs the question, have we experienced God the way this person's experienced God? So here's what I want you to understand. We're created to pass it on. But that first means that we have to experience something to pass on. So the question for us today, and what I'm praying, man, what I'm praying, is that even right now, the first day that we go to two services, is that we would experience God so deeply and so truly that it would change the way we live our lives to the point that when we come out of this place, man, we're desperate to tell somebody. We can't get to the restaurant to eat lunch on Sunday without being, man, let me tell you about what God has done in my life. Wouldn't that be awesome? So, you might be here with me, you might be here today, and you might, man, Dallas, I'm on board with multi-generational ministry. I'm on board with diversity. What do we do now? I want to get, as we close, I want to give us just a couple of ways we need to respond, okay, and be thinking about this. Here's the first way. This morning, we need to be laying down our preference for our purpose. As a member of Harrison Bridge, as someone who's been coming, listen, kill your church shopping mentality and ask yourself how you can become a part of what's going on here and how you can invest. Number two, another way that we need to respond might be this. For some of us, we have got to come to grips with God's purpose for our life. We've got to understand, man, this is so hard for me to understand, that God's purpose for my life does not center around what I want, what I think is best, or what I feel like will make me the happiest. The, the reality, God, God's really not all that concerned with your happiness? I, some people are like, what? Right? Man, God's plan runs far deeper than just your happiness right now. He has a deep purpose for your life, and it's time for some of us to embrace that. Finally, there may be some of you here today and you don't even have a relationship with Christ. And let me just be honest with you, nothing I've said to you today applies to you in the slightest way if you don't have a relationship with Christ. You can't be worried about multi-generational ministry or uh, being, about being diverse and killing anything in your heart that, uh, that's racist or anything like that when you're not in right relationship with God. And here's what I want you to understand. Sin makes us enemies of God so that at the time we are born, we are not in right relationship with God. We are enemies of God. But here's the good news. Christ Jesus left heaven, came to earth, lived the life we couldn't live, died the death we, did, we should have died, and then he rose in victory three days later, defeating sin, defeating death, and defeating hell, giving that to us and forgiving our transgressions. So now we don't have to be enemies of God. We can be children of God. And if that's you this morning, forget everything else I've said. Today you can become a child of God.
Would you accept that invitation? Would you lay down your life and say, Jesus Christ, I would rather have you than anything else. And then we'll worry about the other stuff later. So as we leave here today, I just want to challenge you with that. Will we be the church that, that embraces the discomfort of reaching every type of person, every age group, every race, every socioeconomic status? Would we be willing to embrace that for the glory of God in our lives? Let's pray. God, thank you so much for loving me. God, I don't deserve your grace. God, I don't deserve for you to love me the way that you do. God, I'm the worst sinner up here, God. But your grace in my life, God, it amazes me that you would love a sinner like me. God, I just pray for me personally, dear God, that you would focus me on you and take my eyes off of myself, God, because I hate living like that. Forgive me, God, where I do. God, would you just, Holy Spirit, I pray, do a work among us now for the glory of your name, for the advancement of your kingdom. In Jesus Christ's name I pray, amen. stand with us.
thank you for the breath in our lungs that allows us this opportunity to declare your praise, to declare your greatness in this house. And God, we just pray that you will inspire us to go out into our neighborhoods, into our workplaces, and declare that same thing. God, thank you so much for a church that celebrates diversity in a world that's so polarized, God. This should be a place where we come together because that's what we're created to do. And we thank you for that. God, thank you for sending your son to die on our behalf and defeating sin and death and hell and Satan three days later by raising him to life on our behalf. God, we thank you for that. Thank you so much for this awesome, awesome first, second service that we've ever had. What a beautiful group of people, God. And I just ask that you will bless every soul here today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Y'all have a great day today.